have the opportunity to be with the people that I love the most, uh, who started this healing journey with me back when I first originated the wellness team family. Uh, many of you heard my story, but I went in and I had a diagnosis where I was told that I had 90 days to live. I was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. And at that moment, I decided that I was going to do everything in my power to create a safe place for me. And in doing so, instead of going to a doctor or one doctor, I put together a wellness team family. And I'm gonna be introducing you to my wellness team family members. I've got two doctors on the phone right now. They are who I go to uh, when I need feedback, advice, what to do next, uh, especially in light of the fact that I am dealing with a um, compromised immune system. Although nobody tell my body that because I am coming up on one full solid year of not even having a cold. So I wanna welcome um, my first uh, guest, Dr. Matt. And uh, Dr. Matt, I'm gonna be bringing on and we're gonna have the, the, uh, the time to go through and really, really catch up because it's, um, it's been a few weeks since I've talked to him. That's how frequently I talk to my doctors. But I before I wanna do that is we've got Ian Mitchell, who's my biochemist, and I wanna bring him on and, and I wanna share with you, and there's a, there's a correlation between Dr. Matt and the feedback that I got from my wellness providers when we were talking about doing radiation. And one of the things that Ian had said to me was, Michelle, you know, let's look at this as an eraser. Let's look at this as an opportunity to, you know, really have targeted radiation on the areas that are having problems. So I'm going to unmute Ian, uh, and he is, and I'll come right back to you. So what's so cool about Ian is that he, it's no holds bar. Um, he has been <laughs> our crazy, wild, fun scientist friend that we've gotten to know um, over the years. And I, and I'm hoping, in fact, if we can go ahead and unmute you, I'd love to have the audience see your face. And there's probably not a day that goes by that you and I are not talking. <laughs> and I wanted to share with the whole group the conversation that we had just a few weeks. Actually, it's been about a month ago. And one of the conversations was when I called and I said, um, you know, I had been feeling some pain in my back and I wanted to... Um, talked to my wellness team family. And on that particular call, I had between um, all my doctors and the group that I put together, I had 180 years of experience on that call. And I remember what I said, I said to you, I go, okay, Ian, I go, you just need to let me know, you know, what is it that we need to do? And you said to me, you know, Michelle, you know, let's look at doing radiation as targeted it's like a targeted eraser on your back. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, normally I am, I am to be fair, I am not a huge fan of radiation or chemotherapy, but they do have their place. You know, it's, I mean, there's a reason it's standard of care. It's because it's, it has a certain track record of being effective to a degree. And in the case of something in your particular instance, where you've got, you know, an, a metastasis to the bone, um, it actually is probably the ideal way to do it is to buffer your system so that the radiation doesn't take much of a toll on the remainder of your physiology. Um, but also, like I said, just think of it as an eraser because you can, you can do very targeted therapy. And the same thing with some of the newer things like insulin potentiation therapy for chemo, uh, where you actually use a much lower dose, but you target what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's an effective method. So though it's not normally my go-to, it seemed like it was definitely the case that it was uh, probably the, what I think of as the second line therapy for what you're doing. And I, I think my understanding based on our conversations over the past few weeks is that you have moved on to a slightly different protocol before doing the, uh, the radiation. And it seems to be working rather well, which is incredibly good to hear. Not to say that it, it won't at some point be something that moves back to the forefront, but for right now, it's backburnered, and I'm uh, I'm actually quite quite pleased that it's backburnered at the moment. Well, and I'm so I, I really want to say thank you because as we've gone through this journey together, one one of the thing one thing happened is when I had called and I was talking to all of you, 
um, I had a very different response than I did to the doctor that had told me I had 90 days. Uh, I, I obviously was not excited to hear that I had potentially to do radiation, but I, and if you recall, I didn't cry. I didn't get upset. I was like, all right, if this is what we need to do, it's been nine months since I've been preparing my immune system, you know, for this. And I felt like I was getting the best advice, you know, from these beautiful, beautiful doctors who ha are in it with me. And, and, and so I didn't have any, any other reaction other than, all right, let's do this and, and see what we need to do. And then the second thing I wanted to say is uh, Dr. Matt, I had called him and I, I shared your phrase that you used. And I said, yeah, I said, I had talked about a, an eraser. And Dr. Matt said to me, it, 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 he goes, in fact, you know, Matt, do you want to say what you, what you said to me? Um, well, I'd love to hear what, <laughs> what, what I said from you. I, my recollection is you, there, you, it's such a quick knee jerk reaction, you know, on my side of the fence, which we could say maybe complementary and alternative care, not my personal perspective, but many in my field would be like, no, no, don't do the radiation. You know, don't, don't do any of that. My thought was exactly that, that you know, we, we fail to remember, you know, we're all into energy medicine, at least a lot of us are into energy medicine on this podcast and, and sort of a, a paradigm in which we really strongly um, believe that the mind has incredible capacity to heal, that, that there is a living energy system in and around the human body, which has an organizing, it is an organizing intelligence. And having said that, Radiation is also a part of that same field of intelligence. Radiation in and of itself is energy medicine, which can target and help reorganize and repattern cells towards wholeness and homeostasis. So I just think, you know, the, it's not it's so much of the efficacy in medicine of any variety has so much to do with the meaning that, that the patient or the person has about it. So rather than it being, I'm failing in my self-healing journey, this is a really cool tool that's afforded me to be an energetic eraser. And it is that. I mean, radiation is an invisible force that can be very constructive or destructive, depending on how it's used. In this case, it's kind of both. And so I think that was the gist of what I was saying. That's but exactly want... what you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, did, you... it made me feel so supported. And again, I go back to this period of time where rather than have you know this this feeling of, of of stress and flight and fright i i don't have that anymore because i took the time to put together my wellness team family and i brought individuals onto this platform that can help guide me that can give me feedback and that aren't operating out of fear but they're truly showing up of what's possible what's possible on the planet and, and, and so much so is I want to give a shout out to Ian and he's going to be, you know, coming on on a regular basis whenever we can get him because he is doing just incredible <laughs> things on the planet. Um, and he said something to me last night that, that I went to bed last night, Ian, and I just, I felt so honored, you know, to be working with you, to be working with Dr. Matt, to be working with my doctors, because your comment to me was, uh, Michelle, you're really courageous. And it's true. You and I appreciate you saying that because I think sometimes we we feel like we can't say it, and especially you know when we're the patient and we're going through it. And I can't think of a better way to go through this than not having any judgment. I mean, really, really practicing the real share. No judgment, no stigmas, you know, no no shaming or anything. But just let's talk about the facts and how we can get these resources so that we can heal. And I wanted to um, really, really turn it over to you and, and share whatever it is that you wanna share with what I'm uh, taking and I'm, I'm going through because I think that there is so much on the horizon for us to really help a lot of people heal, not just with cancer, but with, with, with so, many, so many diseases that we are facing, uh, one of which is the virus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. COVID-19 uh, seems to be occupying a, a fair amount of everybody's bandwidth, mm. uh, recently, uh, especially in the past week in the particular area where my life 
we've been kind of tracking how many cases we have locally and it's it's uh it's jumped up quite a bit in the past few days and it's um it is a wee bit concerning but i, I think everybody that works on my staff we've all got our got ourselves hopped up on quite a lot of antiviral supplements and, and the like so <laughs> we're feeling, we're feeling relatively safe and protected and actually hoping to move things forward and and do something for uh for other people as well you know as sees you know the time sees fit because a lot of what we play with are um cytokines and inflammatory responses and ways to mediate uh cytokine storms etc and so one of the things that we have at uh, at the company is you know we we work with nanoparticles carbon 60 specifically is one of our go-to mm. and we use it uh in both lipolized formats and a couple of other different varieties where we'll play with fuller and all and uh, other moieties and things like that so that we can get into different specific areas in the body and try and negate inflammatory response, which as fate would have it right now is kind of a pressing thing because one of the big issues with the, the whole COVID-19 thing is that it causes an inflammatory response and, um, you know, the, uh, the, the physiology, the way it presents is people are having uh, fibrolytic deposits in their lungs and and sclerotic uh, scar tissue effectively uh, mats up in their lungs and they the alveoli get occluded so that they can't actually breathe. And that's uh, generally kind of a, a difficult thing to deal with, but we've been working on uh, some protocols trying to come up with ways to alleviate that with proteolytic enzymes and some other things so that we can get, uh, get that into the bloodstream in buffered ways so that it actually gets taken in so that we can both suppress cytokine storms while simultaneously taking out sclerotic deposits and fibrinolytic deposits using natural compounds so it's not so jarring because we also i mean we have hydroxychloroquine and stuff like that but i'm not a i'm not a huge proponent of anti-malarial drugs because there's a lot of there's a lot of issues with them they right off the gate you know they cause retinopathy and some other things and a lot of oddball effects with vasoconstriction and there's some downsides that are not not really so good but insofar as most people probably have access to things that would benefit them right now, um, though they don't actually know they do. I mean, my the first thing I would tell everybody is go out and uh, stock up on serapeptase and just take mm. serapeptase capsules. They're great. Um, they're in of the other proteolytic enzymes, there's quite a few of them, and they'll help keep your lungs clear if you are starting to build up deposits. Um, particular take is uh, uh, Arthur Andrew is the company that I generally use because in terms of capsules, I actually buy it uh, a much higher strength enzyme from a chemical supplier that I use in-house. But if I were recommending this to you know family and friends, I would say hop online, buy some serapeptase, pop a couple of caps of that, keep yourself going. It's, it's one of those things, it's, it's a resource that people don't even realize is out there. Um, well, more. this is a question too, yeah. is I, and I want to go back to that because what I'd like to do is go ahead and actually add this into the link and make okay. sure afterwards people are going to have a step-by-step. -step. And I wanted to share um, with you, and this is a question that I have for my doctors and I know others do as well. Uh, we very sadly uh, had a family member who uh, went in to see her dad uh, at the nursery and was turned away because he was showing uh, flu symptoms. And so she couldn't visit with him. And last night he passed away. Mm. Um, and what's, what's really, really heartbreaking is that they can't even do, uh, and we can't even do a proper funeral yeah. for, for this. I mean, that's what's happening um, and, and, and it's happening everywhere. And I had uh, you know, really started looking at just what I'm doing and from a, from a quarantine standpoint um, and want to give this advice back. So I've been in quarantine in my house. You know, I feel very, very fortunate because my family uh, has also stayed home with me. So it's been since uh, Friday the 13th mm -hmm. that I have gone outside. I was going in to get a prescription refilled and had back saying, you know, is this something that we can do uh, as a Zoom call? Uh, because I've already gotten the prescription filled uh, back on March 5th. So I'm going to be pushing back because I just, I didn't feel like it was okay for me to go ahead. And the first place that I go out to, you know, is 
you know, a hospital facility, you know, and a medical facility. I don't think that should be the first place that I go to. And, and I think I should look for other options. What's your thought? I would avoid going to a hospital unless you absolutely have to right now. I would also probably recommend not licking doorknobs as you move through your town. I think they probably both have the uh, the same beneficial and detrimental consequences right now. I yeah, I would. The whole idea of shelter in place is uh, is probably a good concept for a bit to flatten out the curve, as everyone keeps calling it. Um, just looking at the numbers of this. Uh, not to be terribly alarmist, but myself and the guys in the lab, we were tracking it at the beginning of January and all started stockpiling supplies and the like. You know, we are we are anything but the, uh, the prepper sort, but I, I'm beginning to think that most of those guys who kind of fall into the prepper category, uh, I think the moniker may not be prepper anymore. It should be forward-thinking realist. So it's... <laughs> and just it's because we had... Well, think about it too. We talked about this yesterday is let's not have, you know, let's not make this about physical, you know, this is about physical isolation, but this doesn't mean that we need to go ahead and not do business. We can still have Zoom calls. We can still have visits with our doctors, you know, like we're doing right now. You could still charge a fee, you know, for, for that visit. You don't have to have it be where we're, we're in contact. Yeah, well, uh, you're completely together. right. I mean, we do at this point, we have a global economy, but it's also a global digital economy. So mm -hmm. that's why Amazon seems to be doing pretty well these days. I doubt if Jeff Bezos is going out and, you know, taking orders by hand. Um, you know, and likewise, most of the things that we do, it's all remote. I mean, I work with a ton of people all over the world. And, you know, I mean, we, we're doing, you know, conference calls in Germany and Mexico and, you know, California all the time. Um, Russia, all over the place. I just just got off a call with the guys in Russia, and you know that's one of the things is the world uh, is very connected now, and we can use that to our advantage. I think. Well, and I think this is just going to give us that opportunity to really have more of uh, the real share. I mean, when you had called me that day, and you're like, Michelle, the real share is working. You know, we yeah, it is in Germany. You know, for yeah. I mean, that so I, I think this is. I mean, this is a great concept. It's terrific. And I, you know, the, on the note of the, uh, the comment I made about you being courageous, it's true because there is a whole lot of misgiving that people generally have about opening up and saying, okay, so this is what's going wrong with me physically. This is because, it, I mean, we're all, you know, capitulating to some weakness in effect. And there's a lot of shame and guilt that are tied around those things. And those are completely pointless emotions. You know, it's uh, as one of the doctors who mentors me tells me that's, you know, the loser's triangle, you know, where it just kind of weighs down mm. and puts you into a space of shame and guilt, regret, and none of that stuff is beneficial. All it does is distract you from actually being able to focus on what you need to do, come up with a game plan and execute on it. And it's, I don't know if you've ever seen a book about strategy, but the fellow's name was John Boyd, and he defined a thing called the OODA loop, which is observe, orient, decide, and act. And that really applies to a lot of what's going on right now, both culturally and in terms of medicine. Um, there, there's no sense in being upset or frustrated. You just observe the situation, you know, orient for what you're going to do, decide to make the approach and act on it, you know, which was great because you have a team that you trust. So when we recommended that, you know, radiation was the way to go, you didn't beleaguer the point. You didn't get upset. You didn't pound your fist. You went, okay, I've assembled a team of experts because they will do for me what I am not capable of doing for myself with my goals in mind. And that's, that's actually how I feel. And I'm sure that's how Matt feels too, is we have a skill set that allows us to contribute in a way that you would do for yourself if you possess that skill set. And that's, you know, it's no different than when I, I mean, people call me for one thing, but they also call a plumber for another thing. You know, it's, it's just, that skill set that they need that they don't personally have. So all I'm doing is augment it. And you really were quite great in your approach in that mm. you had something that normally would be, I mean, nobody wants to hear, hey, by the way, you need radiation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when that was the uh when that was the 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 summation of the whole analysis from you know myself and Q and Steven and everybody else on the team, um you didn't hold back. You just said, okay, fair enough. We'll roll Let, with it. Let's, let's do this. And I think that. too, you know, I also look at the days of trying to be everything to everybody. I mean, that's how mm -hmm. I got myself into stage four. I mean, truly. 
it was, it was me feeling like I could take it all on. And some of the hmm. loneliest times that I've had was when I was handling the conference all by myself or in my head. And I wasn't reaching out when I needed help and needed assistance. And I know that I don't have 180 years of experience, but I, I knew at that point, and I, I shared this with, with my dad the other night. I said, dad, I was so proud of myself because I brought together the best of the best. And, and I let them go ahead and give me a recommendation. And it was like, let's go for it. So much so that you called back uh, a week later and you got my husband and I on the phone and you were telling us about what you had sourced and through this real share and just patients being honest and sharing their protocols and exactly what they're doing. And we were able to take the stuff that you had me doing and take the folks that you had in Germany and start matching the pieces together. So I, I definitely want to have an entire um, show. And like I said, I'll, I'll be anytime that you're able to come on. Uh, you're the smartest guy that I know, you know, out there uh, next to my husband <laughs> and Dr. Matt. <laughs> but you, you, you show up with these massive loving hearts and you just want to help and it's, it's contagious and I, I love you for it. And anything that I can do to create a platform for the superheroes on this planet. Um, and that's you guys. And that's why I wanted to pull you guys together because, uh, you know, we can do this together. You know, we can be the spokes in the wheel with each one of us coming in and doing their part and doing their genius. And, uh, and, and the thing I love about you, Ian, the most is that you always have me laughing. You always. Oh. <laughs> That's a good thing. Hey, yeah. one, uh, one quick shout out, to Matt. Uh, Matt, I just wanted to say, I very much appreciate your approach about uh, the idea of therapeutics via energy and directed and focused energy, because mm. I think it's totally true. And in a, in a perfect sense, would be able to do that for themselves. But uh, I agree where they're not, hey, we've got something that can direct the beam at you. And yeah, that's great. Because even though I play mostly with chemicals, uh, in the last analysis, all that really is is using compounds to manipulate energy flow. You know exactly. So it's just yeah, basically I mean, it's another way to do it. That's thanks for saying that, Doctor Ian. And I mean, those those chemicals are are bound by energy and are surrounded yeah. by you know various fields. So it's all vibration and frequency. And sometimes we're gifted by this greater consciousness and awareness tools like um molecules that you'd prescribe or radiation therapy yeah. so thanks for that i really appreciate hey, it no i keep keep doing what you're doing i think collectively as a team we're going to pull all this stuff together totally so. yeah we are so i had one uh one last comment and yes. i wanted to say is there one thing that you can tell the audience that they can do immediately today and i also want to give a shout out uh, and say thank you for being on the call Oh, my I, pleasure. Ian told me last night, he goes, if I'm not with the governor, then I'll be with you, Michelle. And so mm -hmm. I just want to, again, say thank you for uh, giving my mama bears, my papa bears, <laughs> family to family, real live information of, of how we can protect our families. And my family loves you so much. Oh, that's awesome. Well, it's mutual. Um, if, I, if I could give any information, like what I tell my family right now um, is... If there's just kind of for the ongoing stuff, I would uh, have a little bit of curcumin as an antioxidant because it's readily available. Um, if they have the ability, carbon 60 is better. So how should they take that? When you just orally. That? Capsules are fine. Um, and if they wanted to get really, really aggressive with their approach, I would actually recommend that they take the capsule and open it up and mix it in a little bit of oil. Um, just because it's going to buffer it a little bit so that it moves more effectively through your GI tract and you get a little bit more of it ending up towards the small intestine in lieu of getting degraded by your stomach acid. Um, so it, just curcumin in general is great. Um, olive oil is a good thing, just a little bit, uh, just for some of the compounds. St. John's wort is really good and quercetin. Uh, well, and I talked to you, you were at Mother's and you were telling me that you're picking some. Say, yeah, some I was up. because I was, I was still, and still am actually. I feel like I have, I have the back phone, you guys. <laughs> I, I literally, I'm, and, and, and I've said this, you know, to my friends, I'm like, listen, 
All right. Mama Bear is out out there. I'm banging on the phone. So I love that you always answer my call. I'm very yeah. Pleased. Well, it's uh, yeah, but you know you've got a good forum and you're helping a lot of people. So anything I can do, I just feel like it's a it's a force multiplier. So um, yeah, tell people get uh, some serapeptase. Uh, like I said, the best brand that I played with. Uh, if I'm not buying direct enzymes from a chemical company, it's a company called Arthur Andrew. And I think theirs is called Seratia. And do about 250,000 SIUs daily, which is two little capsules. Um, and that's, that's mainly just because it breaks down sclerotic deposits and it will help also with fibrinolytics deposits in the lungs. Curcumin, just a good anti-inflammatory. Um, if they want to do carbon 60, it's, it's a more expensive approach, but it's a great anti-inflammatory. I'm obviously biased because I research it all the time and have a company that does that, but mm. or, you know, I play with it and I know it's effective. Um, but there, there are plenty of companies out there. Some people like olive oil, some people like coconut oil. They're all really good. The, the, the main thing is, you know, in the clinical studies I did, um, you could see a really precipitous drop in cytokine levels in about two hours. And so for people who are having some sort of acute phase reaction, um, you know, the, the ARDS component, which is acute respiratory distress, um, you know, do something like that, you know, try and suppress your cytokines. That's, that's the way to keep this at bay. Because personally speaking, I don't actually think the, uh, the idea of a vaccine is terribly viable at the moment. I think a better approach is to try and keep your innate immune system healthy enough and your cytokines suppressed enough that you buy time so your immune system can actually develop its own antibodies and you can work through it. Well, can I ask you a quick question, Ian? Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I was just curious uh, with the, the conversation about the anti-malarial medicine. One thing we used to use in, in the Chinese medical pharmacopoeia was Ar artemisia. Um, it, it, and it's antiviral. It was also somewhat useful with malaria. Have you, have you heard anything about artemisia or similar plant compounds with relationship to COVID-19? I haven't actually, but I will happily drill down and see what I can find out. That's, cool. Yeah, by all means, anything else that comes to mind, you know, that's why this is the real share. Share and yeah. share, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, went, I, I went back and I looked at a lot of the Chinese medical uh, doctor herbalist records who were dealing with SARS um, back in the day and what they were using. It was really interesting that there was a few core herbs that, that could help people in that acute phase. But again, it's not super well studied. And I really like the idea of the carbon 60. Yeah. And also St. John's wort is really good. People use yeah. it food uh, issue. or I love St. John's wort. Yep. But yeah. uh, it also has hype, uh, hypericin in it. Yep. Usually at about 0.3% is kind of the norm that you find in most mixes. But it's also been tested a lot as an antiviral. And hey, I am. I want to also bring up another uh, comment that you have for me yesterday, and, yeah, and, I, and, I, and I want to do it. I want to make sure that my cannabis provider, Joe Aaron, uh, adheres this because, and you guys know this, anytime you <laughs> ask me. I know I, where this is going. Dr. Matt, you've, you've seen me with my, my MJs, uh, but I did want to bring up is yesterday I had called and I was having massive nausea um, and, uh, you know, just doing the, the protocol that I'm on for Germany. And so the first thing that I am said to me, he goes, Michelle, go ahead and increase, you know, and, and make sure that you're taking your cannabis. And I thought that is something I definitely want to share because there's so many stigmas around that. And, um, and, and you guys have heard me talk about this. My first eight weeks from my first PET scan to my second PET scan, the tumor dropped 52%. The original tumor dropped 40% and what had metastasized has dropped 52%. And again, I want to give a shout out. I think we are all, uh, especially these thought leaders and wellness providers and healers out there, we're extremely passionate. And so we want to make sure that that information is getting out and that people have access to this. And so I will have uh, Joe on the show later this week. Um, and again, I'm excited because of um, just the products that are coming to life to be able to help people heal. And, and, and they are, they're not costly. I mean, I went in, my insurance did not pay for what I picked up, but the uh, outright cost was, was $23. And I braced myself, you know, <laughs> before I went and got the prescription field, 
And I braced myself saying a prayer because I thought, okay, please, please, you know, don't have this be this absorbent amount of money because uh, they were telling me that my insurance didn't cover it. And it was $23. So I just, I want to point that out and really make sure that, that uh, this is not only a place for me to create a safe haven uh, so that I don't have flight and fright in my journey, but this is for the listeners that are joining us and people that are referring this out is that the answers are available. We just need to simply ask the question and no judgment, no stigmas, you know, nobody's going to be looking at you funny. I think I think what I want to say really is that times of passing judgment, I mean, that's that's last month. I mean, the shit's hitting the fan, <laughs> people. And rather than us be in this frantic state, let's come together family to family and let's start helping each other. And mm. let's not get our feelings hurt because we might feel that we've been overlooked or let's, but let's give each other the benefit of the doubt and let's start coming to the table and sitting around the heart of the home, which I believe is the kitchen table, and let's start having conversations like what we're having now. And I wanna applaud the two of you for being so courageous and for sharing with me what you needed. It's like, okay, Michelle, if you could go ahead and report this back. And if I can create this venue uh, so that we can get the real, real, real facts uh, with real solutions, with real people facing these issues, then, then we will put a stop, uh, not only to this virus and the spread of the virus, but also to dis-ease. And one out of two people right now are facing some type of disease right now on the planet. Hmm. Those are big numbers. Those are big numbers. Yes, they are. More power to you, keep, keep sharing. Well, thank um, you for being my big brother. My pleasure. I, and Matt, take care. I'll see you guys later. I love Thanks, you. you. Talk to you Bye-bye. soon. Dr. Matt is in the house. Wow, that was great. What, what great information. You know, on Friday, uh, I'm doing a, a webinar on um, some immune stuff. And a couple of things he said I was going to throw in there. But that carbon 60 stuff is fascinating. We don't have to talk about that anymore, but I'm really grateful for that information. A friend of mine, we, we can put this in the link. He created a subtle energy app on your phone that mimics the energetic signature of carbon 60. So you can put it on your computer screen or put it on your phone and it carries in the EM field around the phone and the computer. So it works with your energy field with the energetic signature of carbon 60. Well, and we have so many questions that are even popping up. And again, this is this forum. So we are going to get into it. Wild. It's wild. And what I love about this is it's just us having conversations. You don't have to even understand all the lingo. You just have to know that it's okay to ask questions. And so I've got a whole bunch of questions, but first I want to be able to share a little bit about my very dear friend, Dr. Matt, who I had a chance to meet on December 1st when I went to a Joe Dispenza advanced training. And when I met with him, he informed me that I was part of the uh, first ever created uh, men's group. Hmm. And I was uh, one, it was uh, 61, I call my band of brothers, 61 band of brothers, and then one female. Hmm. And that was one of the most surreal experiences. In fact, it really shaped this whole real share. And, and you know what I'm going to say, calling it the real share, the daily huddle. Mm. It was because you set up the most beautiful daily huddles Hmm. with my band of brothers. And I just, I felt so um, uplifted. I felt safe, you know, when we were doing the ropes courses and we were meditating and I learned so much in that week that it really taught me how to be a divine goddess. It taught me Hmm. how to show up as a total mama bear. It taught me how to be vulnerable um, and to reach out when I need help. And it really, really led the pathway for me, um, in this next journey. So I, I, I wanted to share, say thank you and have you on, you know, right at the very beginning. And I too, uh, similar to, uh, Ian is I would love to have you be a guest, um, whenever we can to, uh, have you pop in and give some helpful advice and tips 
and and really really just help create a safe playground for all of yeah. us great which is what you do <laughs> Well, and let, let's talk about some of this background here. So you have been teaching meditation to groups for 27 years. Yeah, and isn't that wild? That's incredible. 27 years. Yeah, I, 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 the, when I was 16, it's actually longer than that. It's actually more like 29 years. But yeah, I mean, I started meditating really young when I was, um, there was two sides of that. Do you, do you want a little, you want a little piece on that? I want to take this wherever you want to take this. I want what Dr. Matt thinks that families out there mm. need to hear, because to me, you're one of the realest dudes I know. Yeah. Oh, um, you're one of the you. realest brothers I know. Mm. And, um, you know, we've already cried together. We've yeah. Yeah. Lots. So yeah. Tell me where you want to take this and, and we'll go there. Well, I think, you know, it's good. Start, begin with the end in mind. I want everybody on this call and anybody who listens to this, and just anybody to know that you, we, us have the power. We are the power. We're, we are waves on this ocean of infinite creativity and power. You know, Ian said in a very scientific way, what I'd say in a metaphysical way about COVID-19, and then we can dive in he said something really profound because there seems to be and rightfully so amidst the fear that a vaccine solution can come in quickly and mitigate all this stuff that we see that's so scary for people not only is that not likely practically realistic just because of the way vaccines are created it's you know there this isn't to say that that cannot be effective in some situations but developing this innate, meaning that immune system within us, which is what he was referring to, over time will in fact create herd immunity. So another way to say that on a metaphysical plane is that by really making very powerful choices in how we think and how we feel and what energy we tune into and what food we put in our bodies and what supplements we take and how we choose to behave in a way that has a foundational act of giving and serving and contributing to the field around us, actually that could speed up the innate immunity, in my opinion, on a very fast, rapid scale and, and create actually evolution. You know, one thing that's so powerful, Michelle, is you think about diamonds. My website, this is not a pitch for my website, but it's Diamond I, Heart but Dojo. But I just want to make sure that we capture that. <laughs> yeah, we'll get that. Then, but here's the essence. <laughs> The diamond is the, the one of the, if not the, one of the most precious substances on earth. And it's a symbol of the transformation of structure because of energy. And it only happens because of a word called perturbation. Mm -hmm. I love that word, perturbation. So, you know, we could say, well, I'm perturbed. If there's enough force pushing on something, it perturbs it. Like when you see an opera singer, I won't bust out the opera singer because I'm not one. And, and, and he or she can shatter a wine glass. The vibration of her voice creates perturbations within the structures of the crystals of that glass and shatters it. However, certain substances like coal, this kind of innate thing that has a stigma on it, when enough pressure is put on it, over a period of time, the, the crystalline internal matrix of structure transforms so much so that the nature of coal becomes a diamond. It's able to transform pain, that we wouldn't call it pain, but pressure. So we are under a massive perturbation as a human species right now, which has the possibility of doing two things, a constructive evolution, both of body, which is what Dr. Ian was referring to, and for me, of mind, compassion, empathy, um, inclusivity, plurality, and spirituality of actually higher and higher levels of consciousness. Because the current dark night of the soul is a very powerful spiritual medicine as well that's stripping us of our old identities that don't serve, our go-to addictions that keep us from feeling what's real from the real share within and without, and ushering us into a fundamental reality and reflection of, nat of true nature as it is. We are virtually connected all the time by the nature of the field. 
this intelligent order that we are emanations of, like we're always virtually connected. And so what we can see is whilst we're physically isolated, I mean, look, you know, I'm out in the middle of the, like I'm literally, literally out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, but we are, we are so connected. You know, if we were doing energy readings on us and everybody on this call right now, I would put a hundred dollars on it, a hundred dollars, US dollars, which are stronger than ever right now on the fact that people's energy fields would be expanding, becoming more coherent, their heart would be more coherent. So I just wanted to say that because that's the essence of why I've been in this work for 27 years, but I didn't get to this place because I was a saint. You know, I got into meditation because my family was really dysfunctional and my dad, God bless him, was, um, oh, hey, hey, Connor, tell Michelle, Pe Team Pirido sends out a massive love. We just got a cool message. So um, I got into this because of the necessity to evolve and grow or die. And by death, I mean just not living a life or being trapped in the same patterns that my family had. But I also had a deep hunger. I had a naked intent for God. I had a naked intent for truth. I had a naked intent for reality. And by naked, I mean, you need to just come like you did when you showed up at that program with Dr. Joe or when you show up with Ian of like, here I am, here's the real share. And the divine reaches right back at us and, and catalyzes incredible uh, growth and transformation. Well, one so, of my favorite sayings, I love that saying is like, you know, when you love life, life will love you back. And it, absolutely. I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm celebrating the best year that I've had on the planet. And that's crazy to me because I, yeah, yeah. I went into it being told, you know, a year ago, I'm coming up on a year, April 15th, I was told that I had 90 days to live. Hmm. And so going back to your comment about showing up in compassion and showing up for, for self-love. I mean, to me, this is about every single day being able to check yourself before you wreck yourself. And yeah. how do you start that day off? And it's By like, the way, who sang that song? I hear this all the time. Check yourself. Who check was yourself that? before you wreck yourself. It was some like early 90s hip hop mogul. I mogul. love that. It, and uh, I've heard some comedians say that. Before. Somebody Google it and put it in the comment field, please. Yeah, it's a song. Check yourself oh, before you wreck cube. yourself. Ice cube. Ice cube. Yeah. Ice cube. Thank you, Rose. Well, and we're gonna we're gonna actually start doing something on. That's why I have to have you on all the time. Yeah, y'all got y'all got to get the rights to that song and play that as your, oh, your yeah. intro in your outro. We're gonna yeah. I mean, it's so. I hope everybody got that. You know that medicine that that you just shared. I just got. You know. I mean, like, think about it. You get this, the, the, the diagnosis nobody wants, to hear the words nobody wants, that everybody thinks is a death sentence, and rather what it was is a life sentence. I mean, the truth is, we're neither living or dying. I'll, let me riff cosmic. We've never been born. We never die. So we, all we have is life. Life, you know, Pierre Taylor Deschardins, he was this amazing Jesuit priest in the 1950s who loved evolution and loved energy systems theory and he said for life to remain alive it has to be constantly changing so that was your little pill from the divine that was your little pill from the divine morpheus who said do you want to go all the way this coronavirus is a pill for all of us and then yes the, the, it's such you know it's such a thing because our brain which has a biologically imprinted negativity bias which means its job is to look for threats like yo there's a lot of mountain lions where i am right now I would take walks at night and the people on the ranch are like, please don't walk at night. Like you're going to get killed by a mountain lion. That's a good time to have a negativity bias, right? But this negativity bias that's overtaking is eclipsing the opportunity that is with this is like, oh my God, this is a spiritual medicine being delivered en masse to awaken people to a whole new level of reality. It's the great I really believe this is a shift into what one of my mentors, Donnie Epstein, founder of Epi Energetics, calls a second tier in consciousness. It's a whole different way of being. And it's really about love and it's about the heart. So I love what you shared, man, because that is some powerful shit that your diagnosis ushered you into the greatest year of your life. And you're probably, I'm putting words in this, so please, if, if this is not correct, you, you have felt more alive than you have ever you reflect more life to others than you have ever and you're more impassioned and inspired than ever 
And it's so interesting that it, for me, this whole year, it has truly been divinely guided where mm. I feel like I can show up like I've been showing up for myself and in, in total love for myself, but I can show up and not pursue the struggle, not pursue the fear, but really show up in love so that I am experiencing the present moment because what's happening yeah, yeah. is, and I've said this to you before, craziest thing ever is when I am focused on that present moment, I don't feel pain. When I am exactly focused right. on the present moment, it's, it's, I'm not focused on the past and fear. And what if I'm not focused on the, the, the future of, you know, well, gosh, what's going to happen? I'm literally mm. living all out. You know, you step when, when you do this, Michelle, when I do this, when anybody on this call does this, when we step in to now, we literally, our energy expands and it, and it becomes absorbent to so many different frames of reality, none of which have to do with our conceptual framework because the concept of I have to be afraid of this virus and what happens or what was in my past or you know, I'm vulnerable and I'm weak or I'm, I'm scared. While, while we acknowledge those feelings and we don't bypass them, we step out of the binds and the bonds of them when we get outside of that conceptual framework, because then you really realize that thoughts don't just, this is trippy, but stay with me on this. Thoughts don't exist inside my cranium privately. And you have your thoughts, Michelle, privately. We share the space between us. We, the real share is the real space between us, which is a living, as Rupert Sheldrake calls it, a living morphogenetic field, which is populated with energy signatures that we transduce or we absorb as thoughts. So I'm scared. Oh my God, what if I'm going to die? I need toilet paper. I need to make a run on toilet paper. That's just not a private thought in someone's head. That's, that's a thought that's in the field. And so by the same argument, we can logically deduce that we can also raise our frequency and choose love. We can choose empowerment. A scientist may download some information that already exists in the field that can create um, healing or cure, just what Ian was talking about. This whole uh, revelation about carbon-60 and the cytokine storm and simple plant medicines, which are encoded with fractal patterns of intelligence. St. John's work, um, what I was mentioning, um, our serapeptase. You know where that comes from? Silkworms. That comes out of a silkworm's butt. <laughs> it does. So I'm going to remember that when I tell my kids. All right. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know where this comes from? It, it, you know, it, it will inspire it's them. Like, it's well. like the coffee beans that Take they feed it. to monkeys that then poop out. And it's like $90 a pound of coffee. Or is it monkeys? Yeah, I think it's monkey poo coffee. So, But, so but all that to say, yeah, what's that? I was going to say on that comment, I know we have some questions that are out there. And, and I love what you're saying, too, because that's the opportunity and in this whole space of free will where you you absolutely can be in charge of your internal ecosystem you can decide yes. whether you're going to let the response uh be one of fear or out of love you get to decide if you're going to allow that bully on your playground and yes. oh by the way a lot of times and i found out i was the bully that was bullying me on my playground Always. Hey, right. listen, let me, let me say one more thing before you go and dive into these questions, because I'm going to share this at my webinar on Friday, which I hope everyone will join me on, but this is mission critical stuff and everybody on this call is going to relate to it. So nitric oxide, many people have learned about through Dr. Joe's work. Dr. Joe certainly did not invent nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a compound that your body makes that does a bunch of different things, but it basically expands your blood vessels. What's fascinating about the relationship between nitric oxide and love, which we get at kitchen table discussions, when you're making love with your partner, when you're staring at your kids, when you're in a moment of bliss, when you're feeling connected to other people, or simply when you focus on your heart and breathe into it with gratitude, we release a compound from our pituitary gland called oxytocin. Oxytocin then triggers the release of nitric oxide through your whole body. Now check this out. I just got a, a journal article from a friend last night who's a physician in the UK, and that release of nitric oxide blocks, blocks the respiratory crisis that Dr. Ian was talking about. So 
when we say that love is a good medicine, that's not new age bullshit. This is actually profound. The, the energy of love has a chemical signature in your body that blocks the virus from attaching and then thwarts this respiratory crisis, which is the real issue with the virus. The virus is easy to deal with. It's that, it's that placking of like traffic jam junk in your lungs. And then the silkworm's butt can like eat that stuff up. You know, the enzymes acts like Pac-Man, waka, 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 waka. And <laughs> well, it goes in and it eats protein structures. And I just wanted to say that, you know, our attention and our awareness and our intention on the heart to just stay in gratitude, stay in love, stay in empowerment, continues to create a chemistry inside of your body that while nobody can promise that you'll be bulletproof from it, sure as hell can increase your with great statistical probability, you, you getting through this and having a stronger immune system and being a better person on every level from it. So I just wanted to say that. I think that's, that's exciting. So, I think that's so important. And I think even anybody hearing this call and simply put is attitude of gratitude is everything. Yes. And, attitude and, of gratitude is everything. And it doesn't matter if you're on the Western medicine side, if you're Eastern medicine, if wherever you're at on the planet, the number yeah. one thing that my all my doctors can agree on, all of them can yeah. agree on, was my attitude. If I could yes. keep my attitude um, in check, they said that that was one of the biggest things. So with that, I want to go ahead because we've got just uh, six minutes left. And I'd <gasps> love to go over to our Parado team. And I, we, we see a shout out. It says, tell Matt and Michelle that team. I, I did say that <laughs> and you know what it's working because I uh, look at me I mean I'm feeling like a billion bucks I feel um, a billion a billion bucks I feel healed so so here we've got some Dang. shout outs so be well forever <laughs> he's in Charlotte then my brother be well forever yes. he's in Charlotte yeah Michelle, you look vibrant. You look so vibrant. Oh, mm -hmm. I miss you, brother. I miss mm. you. It's so good to see you. It's and so, you know what? I can't see you. So, I, so can we go ahead, Connor? Is it possible for us to uh, not mess up the live stream, but to go ahead and uh, see? Let me see if I can actually. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey. Oh. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Has I'm anybody awesome. told you that you look like Tom Cruise? Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't heard that before. You haven't? <laughs> yes, I have. Okay, that's a great... You, uh, you had me at hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome to see you. It's really good to see you. Honestly, this information has been fantastic. The energy is just amazing. And the information is fantastic, too. Hey, um, can you introduce yourself? Somebody was asking what your name is. Yes, my name is Chris name. Blackwell. Um, I was uh, I was with Dr. Matt and uh, Michelle in um, Cancun um, for the Dr. Joe event that was utterly amazing. Um, the, the team uh, that Michelle has referenced often um, is a. I've got bias, so it's it's the second best group of men I've ever met in my my, my life, um, and I only say that because I'm part of another uh, men's group that is that's amazing. But that the love that was that was felt there at that event um, and that has continued um, in support of one another has been utterly amazing. Mm. Without a doubt. Indeed. Yeah. We are each other's medicine. Mm. So good. True. Hey, Michelle, someone had asked about carbon 60. They wanted a lay person's uh, definition of that. Do you want me to riff on that for a second? Frozen, Michelle. Chris, how are you otherwise? She's frozen. Yeah, right. Um, I'm doing really well. How, how's um, life in Charlotte? Like, what's what? Tell me, tell us what's going on there. So, I, I think it's I think it's similar to a lot of the places across the U.S. There, where people there's information coming out in you know in mass, um, and some people uh, react to it. You know, we had the the, the TP uh, issue that that everyone else does. I you know I'm still that that that'll always be a head scratcher to me, but um, it is what it is. Um, and, uh, water, water, bottled water is, is pretty much hard to find. You know, that being said, um, I, I find infiltration systems, um, yeah. my water in most homes, they, they seem to, to do the trick. And I would say to, to be truthful overall, my experience so far has been community and unity. Um, whenever I have gone out, 
um, but I, I don't I don't try and do that a lot. I do take nice. you know, I adhere to um, the standards of um, physical distancing, not social distancing. Cool. Yeah. Hey, you're back, Michelle. We lost you for a second. I did. In, in fact, I'm actually I jumped on my phone. So this is how technology. They nothing will keep the megaphone quiet. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Michelle. Out. I'm like, all right. I, I was asking you a question before you froze out. So, someone asked up for a layperson's definition of C60, carbon 60. Did you want me to riff on that for 30 seconds? I would love for you to riff on that. And then also tell people how they can get on your live stream that you have for Friday. Yeah. So my website is uh, called Diamond Heart Dojo because I love diamonds and everything's about the heart. It's also a reference to the uh, Diamond Sutra that the Buddha gave us. So anyway, Diamond Heart Dojo, you can go there. And if you give me your email, I'll give you a really killer free meditation that I made. Um, yeah. And, and if you go to my Instagram, which is at doctor.matlion, you can just follow me there. There's instructions, uh, will be instructions for my immune webinar that's going to be this Friday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So please join me for that. It's, it's a couple of things he mentioned I was going to throw in there, including the uh, uh, silkworm projectile buttock medicine also known as serapeptase, but C60. So in chemistry, um, compounds are named with the letter. Remember, you, if you guys remember the periodic table from, from chemistry, high school chemistry, C is carbon. And so what, what C60 is, is it's 60 carbons pieced together in a very orderly geometric pattern. It's really interesting. So it's effectively a fractal pattern. A fractal pattern might include like um, a snail shell or a fern, every uh, a pine cone. Nature is filled with this very orderly pattern, which is mathematically predictable, reliable, and reproducible. So C60 is a very unique substance where it's a bunch of carbons pieced together, um, almost like a disco ball. So imagine it, it's like it's like a disco ball in the way it's shaped, and it's a crazy anti-inflammatory. It's a crazy anti-inflammatory and more uh, less conventional physicians have been talking about it for a long time. But it, it, so what it does is it really suppresses inflammation, especially with cytokines. Um, it's a crazy powerful antioxidant. It really boosts your immune system. So that's what it is. So you can actually buy forms of C60 on Amazon. Uh, she asked if it's a capsule or liquid. Capsule? There's, yeah. 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 There's different forms of it. And I don't, I wish Dr. Ian would, maybe he'll link up with his favorite brand. You can get some, but I wanted to tell you, if you go to subtle.energy, subtle.energy, um, my friend created a bunch of different apps for your phone that emanate energetic signatures of different things. And one of them is C60. So you can get your phone sort of acting like a virtual C60. And if you keep it around your person, it doesn't mitigate the EMFs, but what it does do is it populates those EMFs with energetic signatures of different substances like C60. So isn't that fascinating? So you can do it that energetically awesome. and you can also so, take it, do both. So a special thank you, Dr. Matt, for coming out. I, I know I need to have you back next week. So let's talk. <laughs> let's do uh, it. <laughs> we're totally booked, but I'm going to move this around. Want to give a shout out to Chris, who is representing the Peridot family, our band of brothers, really well. And thank you so much, Rose Tafoya, mm -hmm. Karen Vipollins. I'm seeing all the different names of the folks that are joining in. And yeah, yeah. This is our extended and our expanded family. So thank yeah. you for joining us. We'll see you all tomorrow at 4 p.m. Have a great Love you guys. Day, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Love you back. Bye. Om Mane Padme Om.